My name is Derek Knowles, and I am a PhD student under Professor Grace Scout in the Stanford Navigation and Autonomous Vehicles Laboratory. Today, I will be introducing a new technique for the detection and exclusion of faulty GNSS signals using a tool from graph theory called Euclidean distance matrices. Currently, two separate categories dominate the research in GNSS fault detection and exclusion, or FDE, residual-based and solution separation. Residual-based FDE detects faults by examining the difference between a measured pseudorange value and the expected pseudorange value. Residual-based FDE requires an estimated position of the receiver to determine the expected pseudorange value. Solution separation FDE detects faults by comparing the least squares position estimate using all satellite measurements with the position estimate using subsets of measurements. As the number of faults hypothesized increases, the computation time required for solution separation FDE increases in a combinatorial manner. All residual-based and solution separation FDE algorithms have previously been demonstrated to be successful. Our presentation today presents a third category of FDE that leverages Euclidean distance matrices, or EDMs. In the following slides, I will explain EDMs in more detail. This proposed third category using EDMs is an attempt to make the time complexity of fault exclusion independent of the number of measurements received. Like residual-based FDE, EDM-based FDE has a constant time solution for fault detection. However, it can perform fault exclusion in constant time with respect to the number of measurements received, and only scales linearly with respect to the number of faults hypothesized. Additionally, EDM-based FDE does not explicitly require an estimate of the receiver's location like residual-based FDE requires. It is much more robust to small changes in its fault detection thresholding parameter. I will begin my presentation with illustrative examples of Euclidean distance matrices and how one can construct an EDM with the GNSS measurements. Next, I will present how we can leverage EDMs to rapidly both detect and exclude GNSS faults. Finally, I will explain a real-world implementation of EDM-based FTE and compare EDM-based FTE with residual-based and solution separation FTE on two real-world datasets, examining their fault detection sensitivity and their robustness to noise. Simply put, a Euclidean distance matrix, noted as D, is a matrix that contains the square distances between all pairs of points in a system. In this example, we illustrate a system comprised of four points, one receiver and three satellites. First, we can fill in the diagonal with the zeros, representing the fact that the distance is zero between any point and itself. We can fill in the leftmost column and topmost row with the squared values of the measured pseudoranges between the receiver and each satellite. In this simple example, we will say that each distance has a value of three units. So we add three squared to the EDM in the appropriate locations. Finally, we can use the known satellite positions provided in ephemeris data to determine the distance between each of the satellites and fill in the corresponding bottom right square of the EDM with the squares of those distances. To recap, an EDM D is a symmetric matrix filled with the square distances between all pairs of points in the system. For a GNSS application, those distances come from either measured pseudoranges or can be calculated through known satellite positions. We add a tilde to the EDM notation D to represent the fact that our EDM contains observed values that possibly contain noise in both the measured pseudoranges and satellite positions. I will now present how we can utilize Euclidean distance matrices to rapidly both detect and exclude GNSS faults. This section details how we can obtain a test statistic from Euclidean distance matrices that allows us to quickly determine whether no faults are present or a fault does exist. 
represented by the red dashed line on the right that has a longer length than the true distance between the receiver and the saddle. The key to going from a Euclidean distance matrix to a fault detection test statistic is understanding the relation between Euclidean distance matrices and gram matrices. When we already have an EDM B tilde, we can obtain a gram matrix G tilde through a process of matrix multiplication called double centering. For a more thorough explanation, I invite you to read citation six. The important part of a gram matrix is that its rank equals the dimension of the state space. For example, if we are localizing in a three-dimensional state space, then we'd expect our recovered gram matrix to have a rank of three. As a method to check the rank of the gram matrix, we can perform singular value decomposition and inspect the singular values of G tilde. In the case where we are in a three-dimensional state space and no faults are present, we find that the first three singular values are non-zero and all subsequent singular values, no matter how many there are, will be zero. This means that our gram matrix G tilde is in fact rank three as we expected. However, when we are in a three-dimensional state space where faults are present, we find that all of a sudden there are more than three non-zero singular values. In this case, the rank of the gram matrix G tilde would be six instead of three as we would have expected in the no fault case. Intuitively, our fault detection strategy should then be to inspect the singular values that should be zero if we had perfect measurements. If those singular values are near zero, then we predict that no faults are present. And if those singular values are far from zero, then we predict that faults do exist. Concretely, our fault detection test statistic is comprised of three main elements. The first element is the first singular value that we'd expect to be zero if we had perfect measurements. In a three-dimensional state space, this, this would be the fourth singular value. The second element of our test statistic is the mean of all singular values that should be zero. In this case, the mean of the fourth and subsequent singular values. Finally, we use the first singular value to normalize the test statistic to close to one. Normalizing the test statistic means that the EDM-based FTE is accurate across a large range of data noise levels. The exciting part of this fault detection strategy is that its computation time is essentially independent of both the number of measurements and the number of faults hypothesized. Remember, all we had to do to get to this point was to pack squared values of our measured uh, pseudo ranges into a matrix with a special organization, perform some matrix multiplication to obtain the corresponding gram matrix G tilde, perform the singular value decomposition of G tilde, and then inspect its singular values. These steps can all be performed extremely rapidly on modern computers and no iteration was necessary. Next, I will discuss how we can figure out what measurement to exclude once we detect a fault. The intuition behind our fault exclusion strategy again relies on inspecting the singular values that should be zero if we had perfect measurements. In a 3D state space, we'd expect that the fourth singular value should be zero. However, if it's not, then we will detect a fault. In order to determine what measurement is causing that fault, we can look at the absolute value of the left and right singular vectors corresponding to that fourth singular value. Intuitively, these vectors represent how much each of the measurements is contributing to the fact that the fourth singular value is non-zero. Explicitly, for fault exclusion, we identify the largest absolute value of the fourth singular vector and declare its corresponding measurement as a potential fault. We, removed that, we remove that measurement from the EDM and then check whether we still detect a fault. In this illustration, the largest absolute value highlighted in yellow in the fourth singular vector highlighted in red corresponds with the successful identification of a measurement fault from satellite one. This fault exclusion strategy is essentially independent to the number of measurements and can be 
repeated to detect multiple faults, meaning that it scales linearly with respect to the number of faults hypothesized. Now that we know how to use Euclidean distance matrices to perform fault detection and exclusion, I will explain how to use EDM-based FTE in a real-world implementation and compare EDM-based FTE with residual-based and solution separation FTE using two real-world datasets. Block diagram on the left shows the framework of how to implement EDM-based FTE. As a recap, we take in measured pseudo ranges and satellite positions to construct an EDM D tilde. From that EDM, we recover a gram matrix G tilde. We perform the singular value decomposition of the gram matrix and use singular values and vectors to both detect and exclude faults. The additional step that needs to take place for real world implementations is to condition the raw measured pseudo ranges by removing biases. EDM-based FTE is essentially fitting distances between point locations. So it works most accurately when those distances are as close to their truth values as possible. In the results that I will show, we estimated the receiver clock bias as a state in an extended Kalman filter. And atmospheric and intersignal biases were provided in the data sets themselves. We compare EDM-based FTE with residual-based and solution separation FTE using two real-world data sets. The first data set on the left is relatively clean with low residuals. We then added our own fault biases to measurements from 10 to 200 meters to determine each FTE method's detection sensitivity relative to the bias magnitude. The second real-world data set on the right was recorded on Android phones and is a much larger data set with larger residuals. We use this data set to compare how each FTE method handles noisier data across a wide range of open sky to urban conditions. For both data sets, we provide validation of the low computational complexity of EDM-based FTE by timing how long a Python implementation of each FTE method takes to perform detection and exclusion. We also provide accuracy results based on the relationship between ground truth fault status and the fault status as predicted by each FTE method. For example, true positive rate is a measure of how many times the FTE method predicted a fault when a ground truth fault was indeed present. We investigate how the computation time for each method is affected by the number of faults hypothesized. Here we see that not only is the average computation time of EDM-based FTE smaller than solution separation on an absolute scale, but it also scales better as we increase the number of faults hypothesized. Residual-based FTE, is implement, as implemented from citation one, is only valid for a single fault hypothesis. Next, we show here results for how the balanced accuracy of each method changes depending on the size of the bias added to the measurements in our clean data set. Balanced accuracy is the average of the true positive rate and true negative rate. For each separate magnitude of bias added, we chose the FDE thresholding parameter that obtained the highest balanced accuracy. We see that not only does EDM-based FTE rival the accuracy of residual-based and solution separation FTE when the added bias is large, but it even performs more accurately than residual-based and solution separation when smaller biases are added to the measurements. Using our clean data set with 50 meter biases added, we calculated the balanced accuracy as we swept across a large range of thresholding parameters for each FTE method. The plot shows that while residual based and solution separation FTE have a narrow band of thresholding parameters where they perform well, EDM based FTE has a much larger range of thresholding values that provide reasonable accuracy. This means that EDM-based FTE is much less sensitive to small changes in the thresholding parameter and requires less time parameter tuning to get reasonable results. Here, we show how the misdetection rate changes with respect to the magnitude of added bias. EDM-based FTE catches many more of the ground truth faults when the bias has a small magnitude and thus has a lower misdetection rate. However, that low missed detection rate does come at a price. 
EDM-based FTE gives more false alarms, indicating that it is more likely than residual-based or solution separation FTE to predict a non-faulty measurement is a fault. Here, we use the larger, noisier Android dataset to compare how the number of measurements in the EPIC affects the average computation time of each FTE method. All methods in this graph are using a single fault hypothesis. Both EDM-based and residual-based FTE scale better with increases in the number of measurements than solution separation. Additionally, we can see that in absolute terms, EDM-based FTE outperforms both methods in terms of computation time. This table presents accuracy results while using the larger, noisier Android dataset. Across this dataset that contains roughly 36 hours of measurements, EDM-based FTE outperforms residual-based and solution separation FTE in terms of balanced accuracy and missed detection rate, while solution separation has the lowest false alarm rate across the dataset. In summary, we introduced a new technique for fault detection and exclusion of JNSS signals using Euclidean distance matrices. We compared EDM-based FTE with residual-based and solution separation FTE using two real-world datasets and showed that EDM-based FTE has superior computational complexity while still achieving high fault detection accuracy. I'd like to thank all my fellow NAV lab members for their insightful discussion and feedback, and especially Shrub and Ashwin for their contributions. Thank you for watching.